a, a topics that they say will be on the test. This problem that we are about to look at, this deals with horizontal curve offset. Horizontal curve offset. Very popular kinds of uh, question related to this on the test. All right, so let's learn it. And, and it's not that difficult, all right? Um, the long chord LC of a circular curve is 600 feet. The intersection angle is 110 degrees. The one recommendation I have, when you start solving these problems, I'm not going to do it here. But on the page, write down, summarize what is given to you. For example, immediately. Write down LC is equal to 600 feet. I is equal to 110 degrees. Find the radius. So radius is one of the unknowns. Then let's continue. The forward tangent of the curve needs to be moved the forward tangent of the the forward tangent of this curve needs to be moved moved in five feet. All right? Pay very close attention to that. It says the forward tangent needs to be moved in five feet due to a right-of-way dispute. What radius curve would you specify to hold the BC at the same location as in the original curve? Guys, remember I told you BC, in the very beginning of this very, very exciting presentation, I told you BC stands for the beginning of curve. It's the same point as we also call PC, all right? You, they use these things interchangeably, so be ready for it. Now, what radius curve would you specify to hold the BC at the same location as in the original curve? Let me tell you about these class of problems. If there is, if you understand one tiny thing about these kinds of problems, it'll make life a lot easier for you, and you'll be able to get these problems answered correctly. Remember, guys, the five feet they talk about? Now, I need everybody's attention now. When they talked about the five feet, please recognize that five feet is the perpendicular distance between these two lines, all right? When they say the tangent, the forward tangent was moved in five feet, that means it was moved in that direction five feet. So the five feet is this red distance here. A common mistake is that a lot of people just assume the five feet is this, let me see if I can show it, this blue line. It's not the blue line. The five feet they give you in these problems is that red line. All right? So if you recognize that, that will help you. Let's go to this page 41. All right? Page 41, basically, the area that I was talking about, I have drawn the free body diagram, if you want to call it, or I have enlarged that area, all right? So that's the five feet as I explained to you. What we need to calculate, what you need to calculate in all the problems like this is that distance we call x, all right? Uh, a common mistake, as I said, everybody thinks that x is the five feet, but it ain't. So the five feet is that line that I'm showing, the, 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 the vertical distance between the two lines. But what you need to do is find the value of x. You need to know what that x is. So uh, in this case, uh, we can very easily calculate the x knowing, knowing that the intersection angle is 110. That was given. All right? That was given by the problem. So the intersection angle is 110, then this other angle that I have labeled is 70 degrees. That's 180 minus 110. So if you know the 70 degrees, you know the 5 feet, the sine 
of 70 degrees would be equal to 5 over x. So calculate x. x comes out to be 5.32. Once you calculate that, then the new tangent, is everybody following this solution? This is very, very important, guys. All right? So the new tangent is simply 523.03 minus 5.32. All right? And that gives you the new tangent length after you have made the movement of the forward tangent. So the tangent length is now 517.71. And remember, the, the problem says, what's the new radius? So the new radius will be T nu over tangent 55. And guys, where where the 55 degrees come from? That's half of I. That's half of the 110. All right? So there, here's the answer. The new radius is 362.5. These kinds of problems, they all reduce to this little sketch up here. And I hope that you can follow it. I need to move to the next problem. This problem is very similar to the previous one, and I have included it for your learning enjoyment. So I'm not going to go through the um, solution here. It says um, the, the forward tangent is, is moved 120 feet forward, all right? So in this case, the tangent was moved forward. Again, remember, the distance 120 feet is that distance, perpendicular. And again, this problem reduces to this. I leave it up to you. Do it later. Find x, and then you can answer whatever they asked for the radius, and also t. The, the complete solution is, is uh, provided, so you can uh, follow it and uh, make sure that you get the correct answer. All right? These last two problems, very important. All, everything we've done so far is very, very relevant to, uh, to the morning part of the exam. Now, the next topic that we're going to cover is vertical curves. Vertical curves also will be on the on the test so uh, we'll uh, cover it um, I, I need for you to understand vertical curves basically also relate to alignments but these are in the vertical plane and let's assume that we are going uh, towards um, a, a hill top of the hill so we're moving uh, to top of a hill and uh, what we need to do is somehow have a smooth transition to the next alignment. So in a vertical plane, uh, we can think about, think about it as a hill. Um, uh, that would be one way. Uh, that, that smooth transition would be like this. And let me tell you, here we have a parabola. All right, so write it down, please. Vertical curves are parabolic curves, all right? So it's a parabola. And here, the nomenclature that we need to remember, the point where the initial, the first alignment ends and the vertical curve begins, that we call PVC, PVC, point of vertical curvature, and the point where the vertical curve ends and the next alignment begins, we call that PVT. Then the, the straight line that connects the two points, PVC and PVT, that's called the long chord. Now, one thing that you need to recognize 
is the point where the back tangent and the forward tangent connect. That we call PVI. PVI. And let me tell you something about this point. This is a point, some, this really is an imaginary point in the air, all right? We use it as a reference. Or if the curve is a sag, if it's uh, below ground, it's a swell, for example, then the PVI would be somewhere inside the Earth. But we use it as a, don't let that confuse you, all right? Because it's not that important. Um, uh, but that we use it as a reference, all right? Now, we don't have a whole lot of time to go through these things, uh, so I'm going to explain it in a way that you could comprehend what you need to be able to do with vertical curves, all right? And I'll go step by step, and I will present to you the types of questions that normally show up on the test. All right. The whole purpose of a vertical curve is to recognize what the contour of uh, the road or the natural elevation of the various points along the curve is. And in order to get the, the actual parabolic curve, we need to identify at each given station how much cut or how much fill we need to have, all right? Because at any given station along the vertical curve, the actual curve to achieve its curvature, it has to have a certain elevation on the actual curve, all right? So the purpose of analyzing a vertical curve really, and especially on the test, is to identify the elevation at, at a given point, at a given station along the curve. All right? So basically, that's what we are after. Let me explain to you a few other things. Uh, properties of a parabola. These equations, don't, don't get confused by these. Uh, tag this page because we'll come back to it and you can refer to it later but I want to go back to uh, or go forward to station 50, uh, to uh, slide 55 this is very important I'm going to stay on this for maybe one minute and then we'll do a problem together all right when it comes to vertical curves I need for you to please learn how to use these three equations. This one, understand what E is. E is this quantity right here. It's the distance between the PVI, now this is for a vertical curve, the distance between the PVI and midpoint of the vertical curve. That we call E. Then this I need for you to take a look at what we call L. L, guys, is the length of the curve. And the length of the curve, this is different from the, the horizontal curve. Now pay attention about what I'm about to say next, because a lot of people get confused about this. In the horizontal curve, L, length of the curve, is actually how far we travel on the actual curve. However, with vertical curves, the L, capital L, the length of the curve is defined as the projection of the vertical curve onto the horizontal axis. I'll repeat that. Projection of the vertical, projection of the curve on to the horizontal axis, all right? In this particular case, this is expressed as the length of the curve. Let me go to the next slide to explain this, and then I'll come back. For example, let's take this one. Um, 
let's take the, the, the curve. All of these are four different types of vertical curves. But 